everybody. Welcome to Kush and Kai. I'm Kai. And I'm Ray. And that is all fish for yeah. hello. I'm <laughs> Kush Hayes. What's good, y'all? <laughs> yeah, you be. Kush, I had uh, learned that you had never seen these movies. The Lord that's of a, the That's Rings a half movie. truth. I saw oh, the very first truth. one. You saw, saw the first the, one. When, when and where was the first one? I saw the first one opening night at the then Sony Metreon. Oh! I knew it was one of three movies. I knew it was going to be three hours long. I was, I had never read the book, so I was excited to jump into this new, new event, oh, this yeah. new adventure. Mm. We went to the 1 a.m. showing. Holy and, shit. And then, of course, you there's a half hour at 1 a.m. Oh, that's half dangerous. Half hour trailers. I hope you got back. Again. <laughs> we didn't get out until four thirty ish, and of course, um, there, we we don't have the 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 luxury recliners that we do today. So it's it's standard stadium seating. Looking wow. up for three hours, my wow. I have a bad back at this point in time. <laughs> so I am tired and cranky and grouchy and maybe a little drunk at this point. I it's. Maybe hard to remember, but I left Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring very angry, and I vowed never to see another one uh, until till now. Now, I gotta you got say, me that in the loophole, Kai. I don't remember what episode it was, but you're like, "Oh no, we have to do this." I was like, "Okay, let let me let me roll back because you hit a couple of points that are very key to this." Um, yes, one of three. And then, yeah, a uh, uh, fantasy, definitely narrative. And uh, yeah, this is the first full film adaptation that they did. But um, I got to say, yeah, I, you said you hadn't read any of them. I, uh, the first time that I had gone through them when I was about 10 or 11 was the first like accessing this lore which was like, oh, wow, this is feels ancient by today's standard. Like, mm -hmm. the way that it is written in the book is just, you could be reading, you know, some tome that you picked up off the floor of the uh, tomb of Jesus. It, it, is, uh, it, it is old. Uh, Tolkien himself, uh, who went through World War I, and... Um, styled some of that off of uh, uh, his world building epic. This is the, I, I'm just trying to set the table here at, at the top. This is um, the modern surface for every like fantasy novel going forward. If you've ever heard of an orc, you can thank uh, J.R.R. Tolkien um, all of your big fantasy players that were, wrote books are all influenced. Uh, let me go, wait a minute, uh, through the fantasy genres, your Robert Jordans, your Terry Pratchett's, David Eddings, Brian Sanderson's, your Rothfusses, all of them, like, yeah, no, they, they saw this and were like, oh, there's a genre here. This is this gentleman, J.R.R. Tolkien, um, founded the modern tentpole for like this is what uh, this is what fantasy looks like. And, and he said, uh, he says his name is J.R.R. Tolkien or Tolkien. Uh, Tolkien. Okay. Oh, no. all right. You, you put a little accent and inflection on it, and that's, I'm, I'm it. okay. If you want to go Tolkien, I'm game. If you want to go Tolkien, I'm fine. It, I, you know, I, I always thought it was Tolkien. I just, I just, just, just wanted to settle. Actually, he it. would probably care about that because he was yes. a linguist. That was mm. his game. Uh, this is why he invented multiple languages: Dwarvish, Elvish, Old Elvish, High Elvish, uh, Human Speak, Common. <laughs> you know, all of the tropes that we're seeing. It's like. He laid down the foundation. So even if like uh, like Dungeons and Dragons is like uh, your Gary Gygax is heard this, read this, and was like, oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some sauce here. But 
yeah, Tolkien kicked it off. That was his, um, that was his end mark. I mean, even your, um, um, our R.R. Martins uh, with your uh, Game of Thrones is mm-hmm. this is uh, like there there are lendings to there and uh, yeah he's the father of all modern fantasy which I'm a big fan uh, so this was okay. seminal to me and uh, yeah I started when I was ten okay okay I want to just add to the note we're five minutes into this but uh, if Kai sounds a little different he's actually at a new location. In a new manner, setting the things Bronte. up. So, just just want wanted you guys to understand why there why there's a sound discrepancy there, but that's that's what's going on, Kai. I hope you settle into this new place and stay for a very very build roots, my friend. Build Dig. roots and grow. We're here. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually using the board that we originally used that's for fresh. Christian Kai and nice. uh, many minisodes and this was at studio 1330 um like yeah. you mentioned I, uh, game of thrones during my during my uh, lord of the rings prohibition i i would finally quit smoking cigarettes i've gone over 7 years now yeah, this course. is may mayish 2014 i use an exact date but i'm never fully 100% sure when it happened the point of this is is those withdrawals they're a real fucking thing kai and they're like it's heavy i don't know what it's like quitting crack or or, or heroin or anything but like quitting cigarettes is literally the, the hardest is, thing i've listen, ever done it, it's it's one of the hardest it's up mm-hmm. there with all of those things i appreciate that thank you my man where i'm going with well, this is those know. those uh those withdrawals are real and i yeah. knew it was like i just got to write it out so i'm gonna lock myself in my room I'm not going to talk to anybody because I'm just going to be super rude and super mean to anybody. And that's not cool. And so what am I going to do for like a week? And Game of Thrones was just in its third, fourth, fourth, excuse me, was just in its fourth season. And uh, it's that's a slog, dude. For uh, But I, I would end up binging it to the point where I would end up seeing the season finale live. I got all the way through. And, and meanwhile, I'm still just geeking out just getting getting all that nicotine and poison out of my system but now right. by the time we get to that season finale we've just had the battle of the wall and yeah. i'm i'm kind of feeling game of thrones and then guess what hbo hooked up with imax and they did a, a promotional stunt we're like hey we're going to show you those last two episodes of season four on yeah. the imax so <laughs> back to the now amc metreon yeah <laughs> I'm watching the Battle of the Wall on the IMAX here, and it, the thought comes in my head like, I totally get why people are into Lord of the Rings now. It would still be like another six years before we get here, Kai. But yeah, that's uh, that, that was a long route to go. I know. I'm sorry. But uh, I was all right. To- no, no, no. That, that, that was completely valid. I, I think, too, it's just it's hard to impart to somebody how, well, look. The movies, you know, you can love them or hate them, whatever. Some parts have not aged well for uh, digital effects and what have you. But at the same time, uh, there have been multiple attempts to tell this story in different mediums. Uh, There was a radio play, which was, I heard that early. It was from the BBC um, uh, that 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 got in there. There was an animation. There were some other things. It was about this you, had been right? Cooking for a few years, not a few, like decades. This has mm-hmm. been, and Peter Jackson did. Listen, it's not perfect. Like there's some parts that you're like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, and then they had to cut a, a number of things for books. But this, to me, was like was acceptable was was like okay cool all right all right they saw what some of our imaginations had been going for for years and it was like cool cool cool. all right they got it and they got the budget uh in which to do it and um you know i i think uh one of the highest marks that you can say is that okay look you can like it or hate it but even the Oscar community, Return of the King, but that had a best picture. Mm-hmm. Do you think Return of the King had the best picture because Return of the King is that good, or are they literally just like let's let's reward this accomplishment of filming three three movies 
back to back to back in one one now time i don't span. even like return of the king the most i I, okay. I it's actually like i like the first one the most but i think because the oscars do this a lot where it's like well pacino we're not going to give it to him here so we'll just wait till the end but it was amazing that they did reward that at the end mm. like they they the, the, the that was impactful enough to listen it's a look okay for for people not familiar with the oscars community like there's a lot of politics going on on the back end there's a lot of like oh should they get it should they what have you and there's a lot of people that like oh no they did a great job but we're not gonna do it i was uh, flabbergasted that they awarded return of the king best picture because i didn't even like it the most but it was like mm. this is you know how um a ref in a basketball game where it's like oh i missed that call so <laughs> i'll make it up this is that this okay. is like okay well we'll just we'll just give you this over here and mm. cool and it is what it is guys like that's on the books. So we're getting into that uh, into that trivia now. Return of the King, nominated for 11 Academy Awards, winner of 11 Academy Awards. It's, Holy it's, shit, 11? It's, it's not the first movie to sweep all of its categories, but it is the first one to have the as many as 11. Uh, I, I know there's a note in here somewhere about the previous ones, but yeah, 11 for 11 it went. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wait, is that is that a different kind of record? Like, does somebody else uh, have the uh, win for all nominated? Yeah, a couple of movies, actually. Like, I want to say, like, well, I need to research my notes here a little better, but I want to say, like, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was one of those. Oh, dang. Um, Avatar as well. Um, Another record it has since I'm stalling for time here is not since The Godfather 2 would a sequel win a best picture. Oh, and The Godfather wow. 2 was the first sequel to do so. Oh, solid point. Um, okay, so even as we're talking about this, like yeah, if that's, it that's, is that's in high, high society of mm -hmm. things that it is being compared to and reason against like mm -hmm. this goes this goes in and for it and even while like yeah there are some failings in here there's some great parts in these stories like i got i mean i gotta say just um it uh, in um final battles in uh uh trees uh become coming to life this is a Groot's origin story. Like, <laughs> you don't think an ant uh, informed what Groot is? Like, what, you're welcome, is what Tolkien <laughs> is. Like, you're welcome. Yeah, that's where he's from. Uh, I was uh, unable to call Treebeard as his, yeah. his proper name. I was uh, unable to call him anything else, but I am Groot during the whole thing. And he's I would Groot. be sending you text during the whole time. That's like, fine. So, do, do we get the I am Groot's back, man? What's going Push. on, guy? Kush did specifically seek me out to be like, that's great, that's great, that's great. I'm like, yeah, but he read that when he, he read that when Lord of the Rings was relevant. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, this impacts all the things. And I, by, I know by no means, because it sounded like that, that your story was implying that I, I'm, I'm accusing Lord of the Rings of ripping off uh, Marvel's Guardian no, of the Galaxy. No. no. No, 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 not at all. No, no, not no. at all. No, no, you no. know, you just recognize the parallel, and it's like, yeah, that's very valid for a reason. There's ants. <laughs> he came up with that shit. Ants, yeah. orcs, dark elves, high elves. Uh, I mean, your D and D's, your all of the things. Like he is Daddy Tolkien. Like that is <laughs> where it comes from. Big Daddy um, Tolkien. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Kush. Once upon a time, Kai, I uh, I found myself to be a a, a writer, a, a young budding inspiration, or you know, just just full of promise and and vigor. And I you had this still story are. that doesn't die. I believe. Thanks, player. Thanks, player. I think I've given up on things, but I'll I'll, I'll dive into that in a second here. Once upon a time, I dreamed up this story about you know this this mystical rock. 
it just flew in from the heavens, man, and it just crash landed on Earth. And in that meteorite was a was a ring, dude, and it had all sorts of magnificent powers around it. And someone would find this ring, and they'd become a badass motherfucker, and they'd be conquering shit left and right, and, and whatever. And then finally, they just they, they get immortal, and they're like, "Well, maybe I'm gonna just pass this on now." And you know, great great responsibilities and great powers and and all that stuff and so the the rings a story about you know like the balance of good and evil and what power corruption and but and as i'm telling my friend this story at a very crowded bar a patron four bodies down goes uh hey dude it's lord of the rings i i didn't i, I don't i don't mean to be a wet blanket or anything but <laughs> <laughs> that's already been done oh and i would i would try and he's a hater fuck him yeah ah and then i would see the trailer for the fellowship of the ring and then dreams died that day kai dreams died that day but i just want to throw that little embarrassing piece of cush trivia out there because it happened it's it still makes me laugh i can laugh at it it's fair okay (laughs) listen there is a, a character in the books that does not appear in the movies which oh really is uh not super controversial just because like it wouldn't have made a ton of sense uh and it's easy to cut tom bombadil uh was the character that the hobbits encountered early in the fellowship so before they had even gotten to um uh brie the the the, the inn by the way, Tom uh, Bombadale owns the most successful independent pizza chain in the tri-state area. 100%. Pizza would be huge. If you opened a chain of pizza restaurants in Middle Earth, like everyone would be going and saying, oh my God, everyone would love pizza there. But um, Tom Bombadale uh, was just welcomed um, a Bill... Uh, Frodo and uh, the other uh, annoying ones into his house. And uh, he was able to put on the ring and it did not have any impact on him. Okay. He was like, this doesn't matter to me. <laughs> and uh, that was like a thing that, uh, yeah. Now that, that would have been interesting to explore in this three picture series that goes over nine hours and it's, it's edited cut. Yeah. Even the most efficient versions is like, all right, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. But I gotta say, time is very abstract in this in this series. Uh, I had no idea that once we got to the end of the of Return of the King, that thirteen months had passed. Like it really, there are times where it just feels like it's only weeks, maybe weeks have gone by. Um, Yeah, there's some battle going on. Uh, I forget if it's the second or the third movie, but like. This battle apparently goes on for like five days. And yeah. Frodo and Sam are still climbing up that goddamn mountain. It's just like, how big is this goddamn mountain, guys? Like, what is it's happening big. here? And also, they're very little. So mm-hmm. that 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 factors in. Okay, um, fair enough, fair enough. But it's only when it is discovered that it has been 13 months that I start giving mm-hmm. things uh, negatives that I had in the first movie with like Pippin and Mary, where they're they're always just goofing around like, well, what about second lunch? And, and you know, snacksies and 4 p.m.sies. And like, they're, they're setting up pots and pans. And it's like, guys, we're, we're literally 10 miles away from camp. You can't be doing yeah. No, no it's, they've, apparently time has passed enough that, sure, they might actually be hungry at this point. Can you keep it together? I mean, please, guys. Um, listen, I want to bring up a big point that came up uh, in a text chain between you and me. Ooh. Which is listen, uh, I'm listening. Diatribe, diatribe here. Standing by. Uh, the Hobbit, the Hobbit movies. I um, refuse to see the Hobbit series. I I'm putting my foot down now on this in front of our worldwide audience. I'm not watching the Hobbits. Kush, you know that I love Tolkien and the series and what have you. I put on the Hobbit movies and. In the first 15 minutes, when the dwarves went into their second song, I turned it off <laughs> and it was like, I don't want any of this. Is this okay? Sucks. This sucks. I feel much better hearing that then. Okay. No, okay. this is terrible. Like, I get it. I, I'm glad for New Zealand and their film industry, <laughs> but that 
it Lord of the Rings was three books that they had three movies. Mm. The Hobbit was one book that they stretched into three movies, and they didn't have one movie's worth of shit in it. Like that yeah. was let's, rough. Let's that. explore this detail for a second. This seems to be a thing that only Warner Brothers does, and they got their heads so far up their asses. Now they they did this with Harry Potter, they did this with Twilight. Again, yeah. obviously the Lord of the Rings trilogy was three separate books, but then they did the they did one movie, one book, three movies with The Hobbit, but then Dune. You know what the most offensive thing about Dune is that they didn't have part two in production like that. Did, have you seen the new Dune? I have not, but I heard that they were waiting and it's like this could just be some shit that's just out there and then yeah. they don't close. This is... Yeah. So the opening title card of Dune is Dune. It holds there for a beat and then parentheses show up part one. And you're like, oh, fuck. All right. Now, I don't know how many Dune books are. I heard they're like six or seven, maybe more. There's a lot. And then there's side books, too. And there's Mm. they have their own expanded universe, uh, Mm. much like Star Wars, which is it's a lot. (laughs) I, I, for the record, I enjoyed the new Dune or the half of it that I saw. Okay. Um, but Dune as a concept has its head so far up its own ass. Let me elaborate on that. Yeah. The next title card is it's the year 11,300 and something. And I actually started texting of you course. about this. And I was like, mm-hmm. yo, Kai, is that like the 103rd or 104th century? And you just confirmed it's the 104th century cushion. Like, 104th fascinating like and I, I paused on that and then I started looking at wikipedia facts and all it's that year eleven thousand three hundred and something or other mm-hmm. that's how many years it's been since they discovered faster than light travel and and on that date that's when they hit the reset button but when they did discover that it had been ten thousand eight hundred and something other years to that point and it's just like that's how it be fuck you just 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 make it year three thousand Make it the year 2,500, whatever. What, what, what's your fucking problem here? And They could have. They could some have of that. Some of that they leads didn't. into the Lord of the Rings. Um, I give New Line Cinema because this was a New Line Cinema property before Warner Brothers bought them um, for, for going on such a gamble with that where they filmed all three movies back to back. It took principal photography was like 16 months. All right. They had a full budget of $281 million to do all three movies. And then worldwide, it would make, I guess I'm just going to say under $3 billion in returns. But by the time uh, Fellowship of the Ring comes out, Warner Brothers decides to purchase New Line Cinema. And now we, uh, we have some things where Warner Brothers has Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings in the number one and number two spots two years in a row and they flip back and forth it's, it's pretty fascinating for whatever reason the year that return of the king comes out they're like maybe we're gonna just let harry potter have a spring break and and chill this year for but sure we're, we're we're getting that number one spot again with return of the king and then matrix two pops in the, the number three spot it's um fascinating details within this movie for the record i didn't hate it it's not my favorite. I don't wish to return to it. Um, if no, I did. I do Chris, watch it again. It'll be with the riff it. tracks. Thank you for watching it on the top level. I'm just saying like, yeah, no, I understand. This isn't for everybody, but mm-hmm. for us, uh, I get why people like it. This is like seminal. This is a seminal work in terms of, as I have just stated, like, all of your D&Ds, all of your fantasies, video games that have come forth, like this was, um, without this, like it's all different. And uh, no, I'm a, I'm a big, uh, on the corner of those. And yeah, even George R. R. Martin, uh, your Game of Thrones is, he took from it some, but he was more like, what does British history in the Middle Ages look like with all of the violence and um, uh, having sex with your sister? That is uh, a big part there. But um, no, thankfully, I, no incest in this. No, in- yeah, not, there's not no a drop incest. of incest. No, yeah, they they did not shade towards incest. But uh, 
that that uh, shouldn't that be one of those like uh, tags on HBO where they go like violence, language, uh, nudity, and then the incest should be like tagged on that. It'll probably come up if it hasn't already. If they haven't already altered the, it that, should that be. Concept. I I think I I think it should be. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, man, so we're we're yeah. like almost a half hour into this. I don't even know if we've technically started. Like that's how uh, deep this series goes. Have, there's a thing that I want to address with you that break it down, man. We brought up um, via text, which is Eagles. Yes. It okay. wouldn't it have been easier for an eagle to just fly Frodo in? He drops the ring. We're done. Mm-hmm. That not would have been great. No, why not? not possible. Because. Why? As you had seen, they have flying mini dragons. They're not dragons. Dragons of this world are Smaug in mm-hmm. your hobbits. Is, there's a blue dragon, whatever. But the Nazgul have those. They can fly those little lizard snake things out. They're flying around. Mm-hmm. They're I'm whole- impressed that the Nazgul, and I was failing to remember what their names were, but it's close to Nazi. The Nazgul, they yep. upgrade from horses to flying mini dragons. And yep. I was like, okay, why didn't you guys just have that in the beginning? But good, solid upgrade. Solid upgrade. Yeah. So they have that big eye over there on the mm-hmm. tower. If you had the ring, which was the focal point of the eye, it was like, where's the fucking ring? That was mm-hmm. the whole thing. Dig if it. you tried to fly it towards that, we got flying mini dragons coming to kill you. And those will fuck up a... Fuck that will fuck up some shit. So you can't do that. Like, if you flew it in, their whole existence was find the rings, find the rings, find the rings. So you can't do that. And this tracks back to um, Boromir's whole speech about you cannot simply walk the ring in <laughs> it is you can't take an army in there because they'll see you that like mm. that's going to be something this whole thing was about stealth and how you can get it in there so okay. you can't fly eagles in there will be many dragons coming out to fuck your shit up that's just what it be at one point, you and I in our text thread started talking about memes, and you just mentioned Boromir, Sean Bean, Mr. Mm-hmm. Bean. He uh, yeah. and 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 you you do not simply just walk. Dot 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 is a, is a classic meme. And as I, I've like you, you simply cannot do this. You simply cannot do that. You simply can't do the other thing. Like there's a hundred memes of just that picture, that phrase, and it's a little altered at the end. One of my favorite memes in that series is actually him standing in the river and then just going, and then we just walked it right in. (laughs) (laughs) It's a visual cue, folks, but you have to understand, like he's, he he waves his arm to the right or the left. And it's just like, it was just, it was so simple. You just go, you just go right there. Didn't you see it? You missed it. You missed it. I think we can return to memes, but before we get off track, I want to talk about the properties and the rules of the ring. Now, like you said, the the Nazgul, their purpose is to find the ring. When someone puts it on, they have that power. Does this whole thing start up because Bilbo Baggins put on the ring at his birthday party? Or have they just been... Like, like what happened there? was Because that's where I feel things kicked off. Um, He just kept it in his... His little hidey hole for a half a century, uh, and no one knew any better. But then he did that little disappearing trick, and shit's shit went south. Well, that was. I mean, the the way I think about that one is that Bilbo is able to let go of the ring because we have Smeagol. But even Bilbo has that like. I don't know, why should I give this up? Like, man, I've been holding on to this motherfucker forever. Like, you know, it's so, by the way, it's so pretty and it looks, it looks good on me. Like, why shouldn't I keep it? Well, that's what I'm saying is like, it's his battle to not be that, which mm-hmm. he had a whole experience with and was able to do, mm-hmm. which is unique. And this is why I brought up um, Tom Bombadil, who is not affected by, wait, I'll take off my own ring. 
Oh, Tom Bombadil. Idea, homie. No, it's all greasy for some reason. He was able to take off. He was able to put on the ring and mm-hmm. not be like, oh, I love this. He was just like, cool, it's a ring. Mm-hmm. Um, it is the states of anybody else would have been fucked up by that. They would have mm-hmm. been like, well, I'll be able to be the master of the universe. But Bilbo was able to walk away from it. He it, he needed a reminder in the movie from Gandalf to be like, hey, you still have the ring? And Bilbo was like, oh, well, you're right. I was going to walk off with it, but he tossed it down. It is that. Also, yeah. Uh, oh, what's up with Gandalf? Because he seems very... In- he has a lot of opinions on the ring and then goes out of his way to never physically touch the ring. Any contact he has with the ring, he's literally like, here, here put, put it in this envelope and, and then things will be a lot better. But I like I refuse to like take this out of your hand. He knows it's like a crack addict. He knows that if he sparks it up, it's done. He will just try and be Lord of the Realm. He he knows that he cannot withstand the power inside of it. But, but look, just, just holding it in his palm? like Can't such? do it. No, Kush wow. can't do it. This is why the rings were made. There were rings made for the elves. What was it, five? There were five elven kings. There's, so the total number uh, minus the one ring, 22. Yeah. Okay. The, the Nazgul are nine, and the those guys the, wait, were once kings themselves. Yeah, yeah. So wait, the Nazgul were the human kings. They yes. got rings. They got mm-hmm. corrupted by the power. It was a trick. It was like, hey, these rings are cool, but it made you warp to uh, Sauron's power. Mm-hmm. And then there were dwarven kings that were also warped, and then there were elven kings. So holding the ring is like i don't want to i it's gonna fuck me up that Mm -hmm. was the whole point is like gandalf knew if he touched the ring that's bad times because he's like he will get delusions of grandeur he will be like i can make everything right however it is a corrupting power and then you will end up serving sara i don't know man I, i it is what it is, but I feel I know, like he could I'm just telling just, you just, that's I what know. it was. Was he was. understood he could not touch the ring because he's not stronger than the nine human kings. It was, oh no, this corrupted them. I can't touch it. However, there's a hobbit that maybe could, uh, I don't know. So that was his best play. Okay. So, but, but does. So going back to my original question, when Bilbo does that bullshit where he, he does a little speech at the birthday party, he then disappears and then he he prances off. By the way, I love love seeing the camera just follow the path with nobody there. Um, but, uh, uh, he takes the ring off immediately. The whole thing is, you know, maybe 90 seconds long. All right. E- even in, in Hobbit time. But does that wake up the eye of Sauron and send out the Nazgul for the ring? Like, have they just been like, we haven't picked it. No, nobody's worn this thing for 75 years. Yeah. The first time he put it on the Nazgul okay. were all keyed up. They were like, fucking, there's a guy that has it. That's like, their oh, whole sure. purpose. That's their whole thing. Is like, gotcha. there's a guy, he has a thing. We got to get it. Yeah. Okay. They're just okay. crack addicts on, um, you know, church street. They're, they're just, they're trying to find the uh, the ring. I had, uh, like I said, saw only the first movie in the theater opening night, one a.m. screening, and the only real reaction I got during that screening was, "Is it Kate Blanchett? Someone, someone's talking to an elf, and yeah. all of a sudden she's just flooded with light, and then she has like a demonic jump scare, <laughs> and that I remember that waking me up at about two thirty in the morning. Going, oh, there you go." There it is. And it, it did nothing for me on my second my second viewing here. Well, well, wait, we just talked about like the challenge of possession of the ring. She mm-hmm. passed that test and she said that too. It's like, oh, I passed the test. Like, could ultimate power, if it was in your reign, can you resist it? That was it. It was 
you take the ring, you do this. And she was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. Like, that is the, you know, she's in AA and it was like, do you want a, a shot of Schlitz here or something? She was like, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. That was the whole, that was the whole deal. It was like, this is a test of power. And um, she did it true. I got to say, she, she did a good job there. And that, but that, and that wasn't Liv Tyler. That was, that was that Kate Blanchett? That was Kate Blanchett. That was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, it, I mean, that's just part of the, yeah. How do you deal with objects of power? People have posited, um, yeah, because uh, Tolkien was in World War I. So a lot of like, oh no, you go through the marshes and Mordor and what have you. It is like, oh no, it sounds similar to, you know, war fields in World War I. But the ultimate story, I mean, people have compared it to like, what would you do with nuclear power uh, for a bomb? And like, should we destroy this power? Like, is this too powerful for this world? And he said, you know, things about this, but it has shades of that too, where it's like, is this too much for this own world? Like, does anybody understand the power associated with it? And yeah, a lot of this is an exploration of like, what is that? Is that how it be? That's how it be. Peter Jackson was the director for all three. J.R.R. Tolkien is obviously the original writer. And then Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens helped Peter Jackson with the screenplay. Now, Fran Walsh is actually peter jackson's right hand lady uh yeah. she's been a part of every single project he's done going all the way back to dead alive that's all right. she, she that's how deep miss fran walsh goes philippa boyens little is known about her before lord of the rings but after fellowship of the ring she's a part of every peter jackson project going forward including king kong and um with some, something or other but, philippa uh, goes deep and respect her and um yeah, uh, a lot of the content and context points are from her, which is um, that that's um, no, I respect that that, uh, that that rocks. What else do we want to talk about here, Kai? Like again, I'm I've got I have so much information here to process. I've got I don't even necessarily have notes. I, I think I have some 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 funny IMDb trivia. I don't I don't think. I don't think I can tell anybody anything that they don't already know, except for details like people are very impressed that uh, they recognize Count Dooku, who plays Saruman. Yes. Like, Did you know he was also in Star Wars? That's also a that's that's a fantasy movie where he plays a wizard like character, and it's like you know this man was Dracula too. It's Christopher Lee. Like but, Christopher yeah. Lee famously had a relationship with uh, J.R.L. Tolkien and had his blessing to play Gandalf. Oh, However, when this came together, it was, uh, it worked out that he'd be Saruman, which I don't know how he feels about it, but I think he would have played a great Gandalf as well. Maybe, maybe. I uh, I can't comment on that. What, what, was, what was his relationship with Mr. Tolkien? Because when I think of J.R.R. Tolkien, because of how... <laughs> how old this story feels like and you keep saying world you keep saying world war one which actually bumps it up but i keep thinking this man's from the 19th century yeah i hear you so yeah, how uh, what was his relationship with christopher lee if, if you know? uh gotten to know him was an actor in the bbc circuit and then mm. got to i mean was a fan of the works and then he had these um uh, conversations that were about like, hey, if we ever played it. And then Tolkien was like, yeah, you should play Gandalf because he was uh, like a force of acting um, mm -hmm. and he still is. So, uh, no, I get that. But um, yeah, it just worked out a little 
differently, I suppose, but I love Christopher Lee. I, that, that is my summation of that. You just said Christopher Lee, what he had the blessing, should have played Gandalf, was chosen by, by the, the one who, who created everything. But, yes. But they, they decided to go make him um, 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 Saruman. Peter Jackson and, went Saruman. Yeah. Saruman. I'm going to talk more about Sauron and Saruman in a minute. But whether, whether, why do they sound rumor, so similar, Kush? Why, I don't, why would you pick that yeah, if you're like, a linguist? This is David and David. Yeah. <laughs> why, David's a bad motherfucker, a by the way. Why would you pick that? That's confusing. That's not convenient to the plot. Do you have a, an, ash, an answer for that guy? Or you, no, it, okay. it is. There are certain uh, phrasing and lingual patterns that let you know somebody's bad, uh, like Mal, Paul, Ben, Sal. Uh, uh, so they were grouped into the same category, I suppose. But uh, no, it's hard to uh, it's hard to say why, but. Uh, it is um, mistaken commonly uh, for each other, Saruman and Sara. Dig it. I, I got some character names here, and I'm going to just, whether they were just looked at, whether they tried out, whether they couldn't make it for whatever reason. So Saruman, Tim Curry, Jeremy Irons, and Malcolm McDowell were all looked at for, for Saruman. Elrond might have been David Bowie in a different world. Oh, uh, wow. Bruce Willis awesome. and Liam Neeson both were looked at for Boromir. Mm. Gimli, who I, I think Gimli might be my favorite character in all this. Uh, maybe maybe second to Really? Aragorn. Is that your guy? Gimli? Maybe second second to Aragon. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But some dude named Bill Bailey, who I don't know, but Billy Conley. Warwick Davis, who actually feels too perfect. It's like, well, why didn't they just go with that? Uh, right. Timothy Spall and Robert Trebor. I don't know who those guys are. Um, Frodo in another world might have been Jake Gyllenhaal. Wow. Arwen, Helena Bonham Carter, uh, or Kylie Minogue. If, if you're into that, she, she's right around the corner, Kylie Minogue there. Sam Wise could have been played by a dude named Johnny Vegas. I don't know who that is, but that, that came up. Gandalf actually has a very interesting past here. Maybe Sam Neill, maybe Bernard Hill. Sean Connery actually turned it down because he just didn't get the part. He didn't understand it. Patrick McGuigan, Nigel Hawthorne. Was, that one would have been great. Christopher Plummer, Doctor Who's Tom Baker, John Aston, a.k.a. Gomez Adams, a.k.a. Sean Aston's dad, and Patrick Stewart were all up considering for, for Gandalf. And then Aragon, uh, Robert Atkin, some, some, uh, Jason Carter, Vin Diesel, Daniel Day-Lewis, Russell wow. Crowe, Stuart Townsend, and then my favorite detail is Nick Cage turned down Aragon for family reasons. And I don't believe Nick Cage has ever turned down anything in, in the since 1997. Um, this movie is for wild yeah. with Nick Cage. Are you kidding me? Nick Cage would have been a great Aragon. I like Viggo Mortensen that would to the have point where been... I just... I think his name is only Vigo Mortensen. Aragon is just whatever. Strider, sure, whatever. But no, that's always Vigo on screen. Because Nick Cage also did a number of like, there was a witch one. There was one with the 13th day. There was whatever. There were all like Renaissance-ish sword and sandals kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like he did a bunch of these. It, around that era like this would have fit right into his canon but i honestly think that would have made this worse like nick cage in this would have ruined it <laughs> he'd have probably it tried to do an accent or or just make, even nick cage is like frodo we must join this fellowship i'm yeah, not doing no, that that's a bad nick cage i'm sorry everybody. i i don't no that wasn't that bad i'm just saying like nick cage like this would have been not I, 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 it, it, that would have been rough. I, I, I don't know if I could have brooked that that bridge because then it's not just you know the first movie, it's you know 12 hours of Nick Cage mm -hmm. doing this shit. Like 
No, that would have been bad. <laughs> I, I, God damn, that we were saved a bullet. And by the same tone, like, I'm kind of glad Sean Connery wasn't in it. Like, fine. Yeah, it, that's, I'm great. That, that's okay. Look, I love Sean Connery, but listen, old man, like, you've got soup to eat and there's, you know, golf courses to survey. Like, I don't know that. Yeah, I, that he died I don't think it will work. I don't think it'll work the same way. He died last year. I gotta say, I again, I didn't hate this Lord of the Rings trilogy. I have no desire to view the extended cuts. I'm like, what is that extra three hours gonna do for me? Probably not a lot of anything. Um, yeah, the, for, I mean, you, for me, I'm just sort of checking canon. Okay. You know what I mean? Where it's like, is this in the book? Was that from the book? Is this happening? Yeah, yeah. No, I think the original cuts are great. Like that mm-hmm. is that's fine. You do it. Like not all of the you know, CGI holds up, but you know what I mean. Like, but it was all. Uh, it definitely doesn't hold up today, especially if you if you're watching it on a beautiful 4K TV. But I get why it was so impactful for you know the turn of the century. You know, I, I get all the work that went into this and, and see how things have improved since then. So I, I'm, I'm digging all that. If anything, I would, I would have preferred this to obviously be shorter. Uh, if anything, the two towers, you can, you can just, just pull all the guts out of that. We, we don't need that. We don't need half of our experience with the tree people if they're not coming into movie three. Yeah, I think my biggest problem is, is the two towers. And I think that's a lot of people's biggest gripes from what what i've been seeing and what i what i've just known as a general general knowledge of the last 20 years dude there was an snes game of lord of the rings okay that that, uh, no it sucked because it was super hard gotcha and you had to destroy the, the ring and it was very difficult and uh, I had to defeat it years later with uh, cheats on on a, a, a console. <laughs> Did you and go to GameFacts.com? So, but it stuck. Yes, it stuck with nice. me that long that it was like, I need to complete this mission in my own way. And it mm-hmm. was that was part of it. It was like the, it, it, it hit me that deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank you, Kush, for like joining me in this world of like, yeah, yeah, all these fantasy weirdos. But mm-hmm. that, yeah, you get the primer of like, oh no, this is literally, this is where it came from. Mm-hmm. What's the deal with Gandalf the Gray versus Gandalf the White? Like, I don't rem- don't recall any, like he, Gandalf just disappears for like an hour yeah. in, in, in the second movie. And that whole hour, like, where the fuck is Gandalf? Like, I completely forgot that he was like, I'll be back in five days. Meanwhile, this battle's going on, and I'm just like, all right, what the fuck is Gandalf, man? Like, yeah. Uh, and then he comes back, and he's like, I am now Gandalf the White, and it's supposed to be a big deal. It's like, it looks like he just washed his clothes. What, what's, yeah, what's the deal? like a phoenix. He's a phoenix. He died. Did he die? Okay. And was, he died. I think he died and was reborn, or mm-hmm. he defeated the Balrog. Again, in the books, this is mentioned, he was battling the Balrog on that mm-hmm. fall from the bridge. Yeah. And this is a phrase a fun that scene. I will never forget. This is a phrase I'll never forget. He fell to the place in the earth where ancient things gnawed at the core and were forgotten. And that is where he was reborn. Sure. All right. Yes. <laughs> Push. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, no, it's I, a Grimm's uh, fairy like tale. About, wrote up. What I like and, about Gandalf is that obviously he's supposed to be this super powerful wizard, but then he'll just grab a sword and just start throwing down with everybody else. It's like, I don't have any armor, but stab, stab, stab. Yeah. Stab, stab, stab. And, and I guess stab. to the point where like, oh, why don't you just conjure some lightning, dude? And just like, come on, wizard, dude. Do some wizard stuff. I feel like I feel like we're really denied a lot of wizard stuff with games. Yeah, him not doing direct like what we expect wizard stuff is annoying. However, he does. 
you know, he's getting it done. He's talking to moths. He's lighting up his staff. He's <laughs> he, he's making himself big in shadows. Like, mm-hmm. I don't get how magic works at the same point. Uh, this is also, I think, what we would call low fantasy. High fantasy is uh, everyone has magic. There's dragons, what have you. Low fantasy is... Um, no, magic is mentioned. Maybe it was used thousands of years ago, but um, it's not involved largely in the storytelling. That has to be then just something civilization as fans have been spoiled by then. Just like, well, no, he, he's got to do magic all the time now. Magic, magic, magic. Right. Why would right, he use right. a sword? He's a wizard. No, magic, it's lightning, a, bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. It's a total, it's a total cock tease where it's like, yeah. couldn't you just fucking spray at the thing with the whatever? It's like, no. That's not how it works. Uh, him and Saruman have ha- have some hand to hand combat, and it's 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 all very quick, rapid oh. cut scenes. To the point do you know who like, do you know who did it better? Who did it? Willow. There was two old women fighting uh, with magic. That was like that was the progenitor of that scene where uh, Gandalf gets ejected to the top of the tower. <laughs> okay all right do we have any other uh side detail i mean there's a million details about the lord of the rings but yeah. i kept mistaking orlando bloom as ricky schroeder or excuse me rick yeah. schroeder <laughs> uh let's see sean Aston is sam Sam, Sam's Sam's a good really? dude by the end. Uh, Pippin and Mary, I I hated mo- until the third movie, and I was like, oh, finally they gave these guys something to do. Like, I, I actually enjoyed Pippin and something. Mary in the second movie because they're like, just get them get them away from the story, just have them do something else, and then we won't focus on no, it. No, like, they oh, were. I good. agree, they were annoying, and yeah, it, it's not great it, yeah. for parts of it. It's just like, really, you're t- this is what you're doing. Gollum obviously was it was a, a huge special effect accomplishment of its time. I think it could be re-rendered special edition. It's it looks it's like a PS3 game. This is yeah. this is where circus came from. Mm-hmm. This was the thing. I mean, for your Kongs and your um, uh, uh, Planet of the Apes is like this is mm-hmm. the, the this is where where he got legitimate, and it's like. Any circus for anybody that wants to claim anything there, it's like you have to reference Andy Circus for, for being that Golem's um, wiry frame was inspired by uh John Howe, who I don't know who that is. Oh, uh, he's the J.R.R. Tolkien expert, excuse me, and rock singer Iggy Pop. Ah, fantastic. Orlando uh, Bloom originally auditioned for Faramir, who I forget who uh, that is. That was the bro- Boromir's brother oh gotcha who died. Who, orlando bloom would also land the part of legolas two days before he graduated from acting academy there you go <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> oh. let's see like i said i like gimli a lot he uh seems the most grounded but he's also in reality john reese davies the tallest actor on the set of lord of the rings standing at a full six foot yes. one which was weird. Um, also, he was completely allergic to his, his uh, makeup. Yes. Yeah. I have, so, a, I have a note where uh, once principal photography was all completed, they had some big bonfire, and they're like, "John Reese Davies, you can totally burn your mask if you like." And he couldn't get that sucker in the fire quick enough, apparently. And the other actors could not let go. It happened multiple times when they would come up over a ridge or something, but they would say to John Reese davies Indy, you're digging in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciated that. That's funny. That's funny. That's Kush, uh, I think, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, taking your tour of the Lord of the Rings for me. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. I feel um, like we could go we, another hour, but you know, we got the basics down overall. I get why people like it. I think that's the nicest thing I could say. I would want you to watch Willow, but uh, that is what it is. But um, no, there's so many more things. And then 
there's a, a long kiss good night that's gonna that's gonna happen at some point <laughs> big christmas episode that'll be the next thing we do folks kush and kai uh long kiss good night that's appropriately going to be the christmas episode fantastic yeah all right i think we broke down all the details this movie only continued to make money it made less than three billion dollars total for the for that singular trilogy it was in the top two each year gaining number one for the final two films it's one of warner brothers biggest prize possessions um vigo mortensen speaks so many languages he's like teach me how to speak elvish um John Aston convinced his son to go and be Samwise. Otherwise, that's how that thing. The original cut of Return of the King is four and one quarter hours. That was finally cut down to three hours and 12 minutes. Six million feet of film for this Kai was used. That's 1,136 miles for the entire trilogy. Holy cow. So. That uh, is Kai. like Phoenix to San Francisco. This is it's November. We're we're two weeks away from Thanksgiving. Kai, is there anything you want to tell people that you're thankful? Uh, I'm thankful for Kush. I mean, just being able to share the Lord of the Rings, uh, a sweet again, uh, a ten year old guy, just uh, acknowledging this whole series and then uh yeah no it it shaped my fantasy career which um yeah no i'm i'm game so thank you for going on this journey with me kush i appreciate it thank you for having me man thank you for just you know just giving me a little push like i finally got out of the way it needed to be done we did it uh do i want to go back not necessarily i definitely don't want to go and see the hobbit i'm not into willow but i'm a I'm thankful for you, Kai. I'm thankful that we've been able to keep this thing going. I'm thankful that we're only getting better. I'm thankful for everybody involved in the Bosnet family. And I'm thankful for you folks that have been listening to us consistently for the past four years now. Kai, we've been doing this over four years. And wow. I, I think the best is yet to come. And uh, folks, you're going to check out The Long Kiss Goodnight with me and Kai. Kush and Kai, number something or other. That's going to come out middle of December. Rock on, Kush. Rock on, Kush. From the Bosnet family. Build roots, my friend.